Hi folks, uh, Mr. Teslonian back here again, and I wanted to take you through a quick project that I've been working on here. It's a uh, little gasifier camp stove that I built here. Uh, this is what it looks like when it's all put together here. Uh, I'm going to take it apart real quick here. I'm using one hand to do this whole thing, so bear with me as I have to move it out of the shot back and forth. Alright, so here's the inner can. This is what the big deal is to make. It's just a single uh, plain tin can, corn or whatever you've got. Uh, I drilled a bunch of 5 eighths inch holes all the way around the bottom as you can see here. And then right up here at the top, I'm going to line these up so you can see them. About that far back from the top, right about right where the tip of my finger is, right there, I drilled all of these little burner holes, pilot holes, all the way across. Okay? Uh, as you can tell here, those go all the way around. They're not quite perfectly straight. I was just freehand drilling them. And then what I did here on the top here, you see this extra can. Uh, well, first of all, let me tell you why these holes are where they are. Okay, this can here is a larger soup can, one of those pull top, easy pull top soup cans. Uh, and what it does is this inner can will sit down inside of that can. And what I've looked for is exactly where that's going to line up on the tin can to be below the surface edge of the rim of this outer can. See this rim that's sticking in there. So when this sits down in there, it's going to be down below that rim. Okay, so let me go through here and show you why this works. Well, first of all, the outer can is just larger than the inner can. It's a soup can versus a, a corn or a bean can. Uh, this is half inch holes drilled all the way around the bottom. That's all you have to do to the inner or the outer can. Uh, so now what you've done here is with this, what this is, is a tuna fish can. And I took a two inch hole saw and drilled right through that tuna fish can. And when you do, with a little bit of pry work, you should be able to set that inner smaller uh, tin can down inside of that and pressure it through. Be careful not to rip it because you want it to make a really tight seal around that can when you push it through like that one is. All right, the reason that is that we're using this can is because on top of that soup can, a tuna fish can fits absolutely perfect and seals on top of there. So you create a really good seal against that can, so it helps seal up the top edge between the two cans. Now, so show you why this works. When you set the inner can inside of the outer one, there's an air gap between the two cans that's created. When you seal it together in here, there's this air gap. You can see the two holes down in the bottom there. They don't have to line up or anything as long as they're uh, not pinching into each other. And what happens here is, and I'm going to show you this when I light it, is when you light the fire in here, the heat being created in the inner can is going to draw air by creating, okay, by creating heat in the inner can, you're going to heat the air space between these two cans. And when you do, thermal convection is going to draw air up these two cans in between them. And when it does, it's going to pull fresh air in from these outside half inch holes into this inner can system. Now the inner can, when that happens, the air goes rushing up between the two cans and creates a vacuum against the holes in the inner can, the bottom holes. That draws the smoke down through the inner can, out through those bottom holes, and then back up between the two cans and out these little burner holes uh, that you can see in there right there. Once it draws out those burner holes, it's mixed with fresh air and burns just like a little propane stove right there. So here we go. I'm going to light this up. Uh, what I have here is just a pile of wood duff that I, I picked up from under where I chopped my uh, my firewood here. So I'm going to just dump a handful of that down in there. You don't want to pack it in there too tight, so don't pack it. What I'm going to do here is pull out some of these longer sticks that made their way in there. And you also don't want to fill it past your little burn holes, uh, your burner pilot holes in there. Anything too long, break in half, stick it in there. Okay, so we've got wood in there. The next step here is take some toilet paper. Let me rip some up here, stick a little wad of toilet paper down in there, and then just take some really fine uh, wood and set it right on top, some fine fire starter wood, a little bit of uh, cedar bark in there, and I'm going to light that. Oh, well, we've got some winds today, so bear with me if it takes me a second to get this whole thing up and running. 
Now let's see if this will stay going for us without having to be really lit a bunch of times. I think that last little gust just blew it out. All right, hold on one second here. Yeah. Good old Arizona at this time of year. Definitely classic for its high winds. So let's see if this now will start here. I'm going to try to give it some wind shelter with my hand. You notice it's producing smoke at the moment, and all of a sudden you're going to watch that smoke convert into pure flames. And here it goes. As you can see, the flames are going to start getting bigger and the smoke will get less. Still, still producing a little bit of smoke because the gasifying action hasn't fully uh, initiated yet. It has to reach a certain temperature before it really starts working well which is about 1,100 degrees. There we go. Now we're really starting to get a good gasifying action. So now there's no real smoke produced, other than when a wind gust hits it and disturbs it a bit. Uh, you will get a little smoke then. But now that is a flame. Let's see if I can give you a good height comparison to the height of that flame. Well, the, the wind's blowing it down sideways. But if I set that can on there, You'll notice that's definitely cresting much higher than that can at times when the wind's not fanning it off sideways here. All right, so here we are. It's it's burning really well now. I had to set up a wind block real quickly just to get that to stop blowing it out. Um, so you can definitely see the flames coming up here. It's burning a nice hot uh, flame. You don't want to put your hand in that very long. Uh, if you can see down in there, you can actually observe the jets that are being created by those holes in the side of the can. It's working really, really well here and uh, ready to cook on it. So this is what I have to use for cooking. You set that over the top of it just like that and uh, you have yourself a little wood gas cooker.